Okay, so let's take our model that we built earlier. And this model right now is in the anti-staggered conformation. If you look closely, you'll see that the two red chlorines are pointing complete opposite directions and are 180 degrees apart from one another. So if we compare this model to the Newman projection that we drew earlier, we'll see that, hey, here's the front carbon with the chlorine pointing straight up, and here's the back carbon with the chlorine pointing straight down. Oh, and check this out, you guys. I used white bonds for atoms coming off the front carbon, the front carbon, and green bonds for atoms coming off the back carbon, so that it's easier for you to see exactly which bonds we're going to be rotating, okay? So cool, this is the anti-staggered conformation. Let's see how this thing turns into the gauche stagger conformation. And remember, all you do to get from the anti-conformation to the gauche is just rotate the back carbon 120 degrees, all right? So leave this front carbon alone. Don't touch the front carbon. Just rotate the back carbon 120 degrees, okay? So hey, you're going to see these green bonds being rotated, rotate, 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 rotate. And once they hit 120 degrees, then bam, that's the gauche stagger conformation. And now you can see that this chlorine is getting a little bit closer to this chlorine. They're starting to invade each other's space, but the bonds and atoms are still staggered, okay? So this is the gauche staggered conformation. And hey, remember you guys, I chose to rotate this thing clockwise in this example, but we could have also just as well rotated this thing counterclockwise like that, and you still would end up with a gauche staggered conformation, okay? But I just wanted to keep things consistent with how we drew them on the board up here. Right, because we rotated this chlorine, or the back carbon, 120 degrees clockwise. That's how this chlorine ended up in this position, okay? If you would have rotated this thing counterclockwise, this chlorine would have ended up in this position, all right? Okay, so now let's see how we go from our gauche stagger conformation to the eclipsed conformation. And remember, all you're going to be doing is just rotating the back carbon. Still don't touch this front carbon, okay? So we're going to rotate this back carbon 60 degrees so that this back chlorine will now be directly aligned with the front chlorine, okay? So, hey, let's rotate, 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 rotate until this back chlorine is completely eclipsed by this front chlorine. And cool, you guys, this is how this turns into the eclipsed conformation. And dang, now these chlorines are really in each other's faces. They're really repelling each other, making this the most high energy, unstable conformation. Oh, but one more thing to note here is that I've shown you only one eclipsed conformation. This was the fully eclipsed conformation. There are other possible eclipsed conformations, but this one that I showed you is the highest in energy because the two largest substituents are directly overlapping. They're eclipsing each other and causing this to have the greatest repulsion. Other possible eclipsed conformations occur when bonds and atoms are overlapping, such as this and also like this. Okay, but you'll notice that in these two cases, the largest substituents, our chlorines, are overlapping with smaller hydrogens. And so we consider this to be only partially eclipsed because there is less overlapping and less repulsion than when we compare it to the fully eclipsed conformation where the two largest substituents are overlapping. All right, I just wanted you to be aware of the other possible eclipse conformations. Okay, so we just said a lot of information, right, you guys? But what this boils down to is that your professor most likely wants you to know just how to draw these three main conformations that we've drawn up here. The anti-staggered, the gauche staggered, and the eclipsed. So there's only one possible anti-staggered conformation you can draw with the two largest substituents in complete opposite directions, 180 degrees apart, okay? For the gauche stagger conformation, you can draw either of the two gauche stagger conformations depending on whether you choose to rotate your back carbon clockwise or counterclockwise, okay? And for the eclipse conformation, your teacher will most likely want you to draw the fully eclipse conformation where the two largest substituents are overlapping each other like we did up here. The two largest substituents, the chlorines, are overlapping each other, okay? But I just wanted you to be aware of all the different possibilities that your teacher could be asking you, all right? Oh, and one other thing your teacher might ask you to do when drawing Newman projections is to rotate the front carbon, the dot, instead of the back carbon like we did here. And that's totally fine, you guys. Don't freak out because this is the exact same thing that we did here. 
except instead of rotating the back carbon and leaving the front carbon alone, we're going to rotate the front carbon and leave the back carbon alone. It works the exact same way, okay? Okay, so you also want to be aware that I chose to look at this compound from the right side. So from the right side, when I drew these Newman projections, and that's why this carbon was the front carbon, the dot, and this carbon was the back carbon, the circle. But you can also just as well look at this compound from the left side. So from the left side, which would make this carbon the front carbon, and this carbon, the back carbon, if you looked at this thing from the left side, right? It's all up to you with these Newman projections. You can choose whether you want to rotate your bonds clockwise or counterclockwise. You can choose whether to look at the compound from the left side or from the right side. You just have to make adjustments according to what your teacher is asking you to do, okay? And cool, you guys, that's everything you have to know about conformational isomers for straight chain compounds. But there's one more situation where you have to deal with conformational isomers, and that's with ring compounds. So let's erase all this and write these down. Okay, you guys, so just to recap, we're talking about the three types of isomers a compound can have. The first type was constitutional isomers, and these differed in connectivity. The second type of isomer were conformational isomers, and these differed in how their bonds were rotated, okay, different conformations. There were two situations where you have conformational isomers, straight chain compounds that we just talked about. These could either be in anti-staggered, gauche-staggered, or eclipse conformations. And now the second situation where you have conformational isomers is with rings, okay? So that's what we're talking about right now. Okay, so for ring compounds, you have two types of conformational relationships. A compound can either be planar versus puckered, or it can be axial versus equatorial. The planar versus puckered relationship deals with how the ring itself is shaped. The axial versus equatorial relationship deals with how substituents on the ring are oriented, okay? So, hey, let's get these two relationships down. And let's start out with the planar versus puckered relationship first. Okay, so this first type of relationship deals with rings that are in a planar two-dimensional conformation. So planar 2D conformation versus a ring in a puckered puckered 3D conformation. And go ahead and put in brackets right next to this ring shape. Because this deals with how the ring itself is shaped. And a ring can either be in a 2D planar conformation or in a 3D puckered conformation, okay? And do me a favor and write that these types of conformations involve torsional, steric, and angle strain. And you have no idea what this means just yet, but you will in a second. Let's just write this down, okay? So these types of conformations involve torsional and steric strain, just like we saw with the straight chain compounds. But hey, now with rings, we also add another type of strain, which is angle strain. angle strain. So if you notice, straight chain conformational isomers only dealt with torsional and steric strain. Ring conformational isomers deal with not only torsional and steric strain, but also angle strain. One thing to mention here though, is that even though there are three types of strain that determine a ring's conformation, the type of strain that has the biggest impact is torsional strain. Okay, so therefore a ring always favors the conformation with the lowest torsional strain. So let's write this down. Okay, so the type of strain that has the biggest impact on a ring shape is torsional strain. 
So this has the biggest impact on a ring shape. And therefore, we say that it favors the conformation with the lowest torsional strength. 